Hello, Driving Intelligence Community. What you see behind me, you've seen in probably some of my other videos, it's my nearly 40-year-old SVO Mustang. Bought it off the showroom floor in 1985, October, so I'm dating myself. But many of you probably have old vehicles like this as well, and what happens is some of the components age. And in this case, what's aged and causing me some difficulty are the gauge cluster lights, the bulbs. Now, it's hard to see at this distance, but this bulb is actually getting cloudy. These uh, incandescent bulbs will do that and they'll reduce light output. So what I wanna do is go with what everybody's going with now are LED bulbs. And I found these Oxalam T10 LED bulbs that will go in there. They're red, similar to the original color on this dash. This dash is not green, it is actually like an orange red. So I'm hoping these match up. They're dimmable. I'm not sure if they have a polarity issue, meaning that I have to put them in a specific direction. But we're gonna go ahead and install these on this car and see how it turns out. Uh, like I said, they should be dimmable and they should hopefully match what I've got in the car and allow me to see the gauges again. Now, the other thing I gotta do, I've got some other bulbs that are out in there like the turn signal indication. So I'm gonna take care of all that in this video. So stay tuned. All right, so I'm in the car, it's super dark. There's nothing wrong with your video. Wanna see what these gauge lights look like. And here you can see they are horribly dim that's on full brightness there i'm turning it down and up to full brightness uh, maybe there's a little bit in the rheostat there it might be a little bit of corrosion so it got a little brighter but i'm sure these t10 leds are going to be a lot better so now is the time to take out the gauge cluster so we can get behind it to get to the bulbs the easiest part of this project is taking off the gauge cluster overlay this piece of plastic and there are a few screws up here that have to be removed phillips head and then it just pulls out from tabs that go down into the bottom part of this dash. All right, the screws are out. One of my little tips is to keep these mushroom bins. They uh, are great for storing parts as you're doing projects like this. And we're just gonna pull this overlay straight out and straight up. And here you see the tab that goes to the holes at the bottom of the gauge cluster. What I want to do now is see which bulbs are out. So when I turn it to the on position, not starting the vehicle, a lot of the lights will turn on. Let that turn off the buzzer. And here we're going to see that my left turn signal is not working, but my right turn signal is. So we're going to fix that while it's off, but it looks like the rest of my bulbs are working. I've got four more Phillips head screws holding in the gauge cluster. You can see them at each corner. We're gonna take those four out and then we're gonna pull it forward. I'm going to remove the gauge cluster and show you at the back how it's attached, the electrical connections and the speedometer, which in these old vehicles is a cable. All right, so this was super tough to get into because the wiring is not long enough to pull the gauge cluster forward so you can easily get your arm in there. I've tore my arm up getting in there uh, since this is an SVO Mustang, it's got a turbo, so this is the boost gauge connection. Uh, here are the connectors that you've got to squeeze together. Those were tough to get to because it's hard to get them with all the tightness behind the dash. And then here's the speedometer. You've got to push that little clip to the side, and that releases it, and it'll pull straight out. And it's going to be fun getting it back in. Now here's the overboost warning light, so I'm going to pull this bulb out and test it because it didn't come on with the, uh, the key on and uh, run, a, run an ohmmeter across that and see if the bulb is still good. All right, so there's 12 bulbs. That pack comes with 10. I really wasn't planning on changing the incandescence up here. These are the turn signal indication. Everything else is gauge lights except for over here, which are warning lights. And I guess maybe I'll, I'll change these with the LEDs, but the primary ones I want is for the gauges. So it's these two here, this one, this one, and these two. And then we'll move on from there. A couple things I've noticed while working on this Fox Body gauge cluster is that, and this is the early model, I think this is 79 through 86, uh, maybe 85, 86, but obviously it's uh, a specific design different from the later model Fox Bodies. The first thing I noticed is that uh, some of these contact points need to be cleaned up. You can see there's some corrosion there, which is preventing good continuity with my new LED bulb. So I'm going to clean that up. But I also noticed that I was getting a little bit of float in the gauges, and that typically is the, uh, the voltage regulator for the gauge cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this as well. 
these start to age because my understanding is they're mechanical and you can get new solid state units. I'll link uh, one similar to what I'm using from Amazon in the description of this video. So if you got some float in your gauges, it's probably because this is going bad. And uh, this has happened to me before. So this is a, a new one since I bought the vehicle in 1985. So I'm gonna take care of those two things, make sure again, all these contact points are cleaned up. Probably use a little dielectric grease, which I'll also link in the description after I sand this down a little bit. And that'll make sure that, that everything should be working properly and getting good electrical signal. That's cleaned up now. And I've also cleaned up the contacts on the bulb. All right, so I've done everything I said I would do. I've cleaned the contacts on the, the bulb sockets. I've cleaned the copper strip on the integrated circuit. I've applied dielectric grease on everything. So all the bulbs are cleaned up and ready to go. So all I gotta do now is I'm, just, I'm taking this off of a battery source, an extra 12 volt battery. I'm gonna test all the bulbs. So I'm gonna run it against the integrated circuit. And you can see that all the bulbs that are supposed to be uh, for the gauges are operating. I'll test the reverse polarity. These bulbs don't require any, uh, any polarity differences. I'll check the turn signal indication. That's right, that's left. This is the high beams. And then over here are the, uh, the bulbs that give you some extra warning, warning lamps. And they all should be working as they are. So everything's finished. All the bulbs are complete. The only thing I gotta do now is replace this voltage regulator, which again, I think is bad because I had some floating of some of the gauges, especially the gas gauge. Got the little instrument cluster voltage regulator that I wanna now install on the gauge cluster to stabilize the voltage that's going to all the gauges. And as I mentioned, I was especially having problems with the fuel gauge. I think it was reading high because it was getting too much voltage and this should resolve that. The voltage regulator attaches similar to a nine volt battery. Just need to pull this up and it will expose the voltage regulator, but I wanna be very gentle because this is old, it's almost 40 years old. There we go. I'm gonna take out one screw and I can replace it with the new one. And here are the two units, almost identical. It's got a little, little copper strap there, but this is the original one. There's the original part number. And here's the new one. All right, I got the gauge cluster back in and that was a serious pain in the butt and I'll explain why in a second, but let's see how these lights work. That is fantastic. That is so much brighter, dimmable. I, I really love the red glow that's coming from that, but all the lights are working now and both turn signal indicators are working. To give you kind of an indication of how dim it was, there's the HVAC control. I need to pull that assembly out and replace the bulbs in that and this project will be done. At the end, I'll explain why that, uh, that gauge cluster was so hard to get back in. It was a speedometer cable, but let me get to the HVAC control first. Got the HVAC control out. It wasn't easy, but uh, unfortunately, that is not a T10 bulb. That is a different kind of bulb, incandescent. So I'm gonna have to do some research to see what kind of bulb goes in that location. Went to trusty Amazon and I found a replacement for these incandescent bulbs. I'll link this in the description, but I got these red LED bulbs, real cheap for a, a pack of, uh, I think they're 10, for less than 12 bucks. Again, I'll link them in the description, but I wanted to talk also about why this was difficult to get out. There's only four screws that hold this control panel in, but there's various electrical connections. And then you've also got this uh, blend door actuation here. It's a set of cables and they're just so super tight. So, it, you know, Ford didn't really make it easy to do any repairs on these things because of the tight tolerances on the wiring harness. Maybe they're trying to save money. Anyway, I've got two bulbs to replace. I've already pulled one out of this. I'm gonna test that in there first to see if there's a polarity issue with it. And then we'll move on to the second bulb, which is further inboard. And I might have to disconnect some other things to get behind there. Okay, I tested the bulb and there is no polarity concern about that. So no matter how you put it in, it's gonna work. And that is a nice bright red, looks really good. And I'm gonna go on to the other bulb that uh, is right in the back there. Gotta figure out how I'm gonna get to that thing. 
All right, so Ford really wants to make us all happy with what they do here. This is a T10 socket, so this HVAC control has both an incandescent bulb like this, which goes into a twist socket, and then a T10 bulb. And the socket bulb go, it pushes in right here, and then right at the base of this, I can't show you because I can't pull it out far enough, there's another hole. You can reach it with your finger. My middle finger is going right back there to uh, to touch that hole. That's just going to push in. It doesn't even, I don't believe it twists. I don't feel, maybe, maybe it does twist in. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to have to put a T10 bulb in there. I've got this bulb set up so I can get that in there, reconnect the, uh, the wiring harness, and push that back in. Everything's buttoned back up, but I did run into a problem. Given this car is almost 40 years old, as I've mentioned a couple times, the tabs on the bottom of this HVAC control panel broke off. I don't even know when they broke off while I was working on this. So uh, hopefully the gauge bezel will hold it in. I'm a little disappointed in that. I might end up trying to figure out how to fix that in the future. Maybe I have to buy a, a new unit. But let's see now what the lights look like with the, uh, the new red LEDs in this section. All right, so I got the gauge cluster bezel back on, and here we can see... The lights, they're nice and bright. They look good. They're all dimmable. So really happy with the results of this. And um, I think you should check it out if you're looking at something similar to this on your Mustang or any other car that has some, uh, some incandescent bulbs or even uh, some newer LED bulbs that aren't quite shiny bright like they used to. I'll link all this stuff again, once again, as I mentioned, into the description of this video. And let's move on to uh, the difficulty in getting this gauge cluster in. So why was it so difficult to get the gauge cluster back in? Well, the first thing is that the wiring harnesses are a little short, so it's hard to get your hand back there and make them reach the gauge cluster. But the biggest issue is the mechanical speedometer cable. That's this, if I can get that focused on there, right there. Now, my problem is that I've got aftermarket cruise control. Not really aftermarket. This was dealer installed. There's two wires coming off right here. Go to the cruise control module. And unfortunately, it prevents you from being able to get the uh, get enough length off of that that cable to get it to the gauge. I'm trying to get my hand in there at the same time while I'm taking a video, and it's impossible. But what I had to do is have a um, a helper push the cable through the firewall and hold it there while I lined it up with the gauge cluster and pushed the gauge cluster in against the cable. The cable is very rigid, snapped in place like a charm. That was the only way I could get it done. Super difficult by myself, but I did get it accomplished. 